Once upon a time, a long time ago, there lived two very happy people called Tim and Maggie, with two children called John and Lucy. To understand how very happy they were, you have to understand how things were in those days. You see, in those days, everybody was given, at birth, a small, soft, fuzzy bag. And any time a person reached into that bag, he was able to pull out a warm fuzzy. Warm fuzzies were very much in demand, because whenever somebody was given a warm fuzzy, it made them feel warm and fuzzy all over. Good name. People who didn't get warm fuzzies regularly were in danger of developing a sickness in their back that would cause them to shrivel up and die. In those days, it was very easy to get warm fuzzies. Anytime that someone felt it, they would walk up to you and say, Hey, I'd like to have a warm fuzzy. You would then reach into your bag and pull out, a fu- uh, pull out a fuzzy the size of a little girl's hand. And as soon as the fuzzy saw the light of day, uh, it would smile, it would blossom into a large, shaggy, warm fuzzy. You would then lay it on the person's shoulder or head or lap, and it would snuggle up, melt right against their skin, and make them feel good all over. People were always asking each other for warm fuzzies. And since they were always given freely, getting enough of them was never a problem. There was always plenty of the warm fuzzies to go around. And as a, consequent, every, as a consequence, everyone was very happy and felt warm and fuzzy most of all of the time. One day, a bad witch became very angry because everyone was so happy and no one was buying any of her potions or her salves. The witch was very clever and she devised a very wicked plan. One beautiful morning, she crept up to Tim while Maggie was playing with the, with the daughter and whispered in her ear, See here, Tim, look at all those fuzzies that Maggie is giving to Lucy. You know, if she keeps it up, eventually she's going to run out and there won't be any left for you. Tim was astonished and he turned to the witch and said, Do you mean to tell me there isn't a warm fuzzy in each and every bag every time you reach into it? And the witch said, no, absolutely not. And once you run out, that's it. You don't have any more. With this, she flew away on her broom, laughing and crackling hysterically. Somebody? (laughs) 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 Thank you. You all have witches inside of you. (laughs) Tim took this to heart and began to notice every time that Maggie gave up the warm fuzzies to someone else. Eventually, he got worried and upset because he liked Maggie's warm fuzzies very much, and he did not want to give them away. He certainly, did not, uh, he certainly did not think it was right for Maggie to keep spending all of her warm fuzzies on the children and other people. He began to complain every time that he saw Maggie giving a warm fuzzy to somebody else. And because Maggie liked him very much, she stopped giving the warm fuzzies to other people as often and reserved them just for him. Okay? The children watched this and soon began to get the idea that it was wrong to give up their warm fuzzies any time that they were asked for or felt like it. They too, became, they too became very careful. They would watch their parents closely and whenever they felt that one of their parents was giving too many fuzzies to others, they would also begin to object. They began to feel worried whenever they would give away too many warm fuzzies. And even though they found warm fuzzies every single time they reached into the bottom of their bags, they reach in less and less and became more and more stingy. Soon, people began to notice the lack of warm fuzzies, and they began to feel less and less fuzzy. They began to shrivel up, and occasionally, people would die from lack of warm fuzzies. More and more, people went to the witch to buy her portions and salves, even though they still didn't seem to work. Well, the situation was getting very serious indeed. The bad witch, who had been watching all of this, didn't really want the people to die. So she devised a new plan. She gave everyone a bag that was very similar to the fuzzy bag, except this bag was cold, while the fuzzy bag was warm. Inside the witch's bag were cold pricklies. These cold pricklies did not make people feel warm and fuzzy, but they made them feel cold and prickly instead. But they did prevent the people's backs from shriveling up. So from then on, every time somebody said, I want a warm fuzzy, People, people would be worried about depleting their supply, would say, I can't give you a warm fuzzy, but I sure can give you a cold prickly. Sometimes two people would walk up to each other thinking that they could get a warm fuzzy, but one or the other of them would change their mind at the last minute, and they would wind up giving the other one a cold prickly. 
So the end result was that while very few people were dying, a lot of people were still unhappy and feeling very cold and prickly. <laughs> the situation got very complicated because since the coming of the witch, there was less and less warm, fuzzy, warm fuzzies around. So warm fuzzies, which used to be thought of as free air, became extremely valuable. This caused people to do all sorts of, uh, of, of things in order to obtain them. Because the witch had appeared, people used to gather in groups of three or four or five, never caring too much who they were sharing their warm fuzzies with. After the coming of the witch, people began to pair off and to reserve all of their warm fuzzies for each other on an exclusive basis. If either one of the two people, if either one of the two persons forgot himself and gave a warm fuzzy to someone else, he would immediately feel guilty about it because he knew that his partner would probably resent the loss of the warm fuzzy. People who could not find a generous partner had to buy their warm fuzzies and had to work long hours to earn the money. Another thing which happened was some people would take cold pricklies, which were limitless and freely available, coat them, with white and, and, uh, coat them as white and fluffy and pass, the, pass them off as warm fuzzies. These counterfeit warm fuzzies were really plastic fuzzies. And they caused additional difficulties. For instance, two people would get together and freely exchange plastic fuzzies, which presumably should make you feel good, but you came away feeling bad instead. Since they had been exchanging warm fuzzies, people grew very confused about this, never realizing that their cold prickly feelings were really the result of the fact that they had been given a lot of plastic fuzzies. So the situation was very, very dismal. And it all started... It all started because of the coming of the witch, who made people believe that someday, when at least expected, they might, they might reach into their warm fuzzy bag and find a warm. Did I read back again? No, no, you're good. Okay. Yes, okay, so not long ago, a young woman with big hips and born under the sign of Aquarius came to the unhappy land. <laughs> yes, I know. Came to the unhappy land. She had not heard about the bad witch and was not worried about running out of warm fuzzies. She gave them out freely and even when not asked. They called her the hip woman and disapproved of her because she was giving the children a bad idea that they should not worry about running out of warm fuzzies. The children liked her very much because they felt good around her and they began to give out their warm fuzzies whenever they, whenever they felt like it. The grown-ups began... The grown -ups became concerned and decided to pass a new law to protect the children from depleting their supplies of warm fuzzies. The law made it cri a criminal offense to give out warm fuzzies in a reckless manner. The children, however, seemed not to care, and in spite of the law, they continued to give out their warm fuzzies whenever they felt like it, and always when they were asked. Because there were many, many children, al almost as many as the grown-ups, it began to look as if they would have their way one day. As of now, it's hard to say what will happen. Will the grown-ups, forces of law and order, stop the recklessness of the children? Are the grown-ups going to join with the hip woman and the children in taking a chance that there will always be as many warm and fuzzies as needed? Will they remember the days of their childhood that they are trying to bring back when warm fuzzies were abundant because people gave them away freely. That is the story, and for me, the moral of the story for us as a group, and the gift are linked inherently together. And so what I would like to do, if Nama would, pass out a gift to each and every person who's present here right now. Thank you.